and on my way to the intensive care unit, they were getting ready to put a trach uh, in me, and I had started breathing on my own, and uh, they had done tests and found out that it wasn't a heart attack, it just was chemotherapy again. They had found uh, in my lymph node about a walnut-sized um, tumor that had metastasized and under my left armpit. And the doctor said that we can try uh, chemotherapy directly into the lymph node. It's a new treatment that they had out, and she wanted to try it. And I said, well, if it's not anything like the others where it's, it's just an injection, it's not IV, which the others were IV. Um, so I agreed to let her try this, and the only thing it did was hurt. <laughs> uh, it felt like they put a two by four under my arm, and uh, it hurt for a good long time, but it didn't do anything, it didn't shrink. During all this, I was in the middle of um, having to put my grandmother in hospice because she was pretty close to dying herself, and uh, I had, uh, someone that told me you need to get out of that situation and get into a better environment for you and take care of yourself and uh, just worry about you for a little while instead of others. And although that was a little hard for me to, to, to sink in, I agreed. At that point, I had decided that you know the chemotherapy was going to kill me before the cancer did, so I decided this wasn't going to be an option for me anymore. I started the uh, the Bob Beck protocol, the uh, blood electrification, and the uh, colloidal silver, uh, and the uh, magnetic pulser. About two weeks later, I left Florida to come to California uh, by car, and that took almost two weeks. And by the time we got to California, the, the walnut-sized tumor in my armpit was already gone. It had shrunk and uh, was no longer even, you couldn't even feel it. Now, to this day, I, I do the herbs and I do the, the uh, blood electrification and almost on a daily basis. I mean, there are people that would say it's not needed every day, but hey, I, I should be dead by all um, medical standards. And uh, if it's going to help me to stay alive, it's not going to bother me to wear a little thing on my arm for a couple of hours. <laughs> I've had arthritis since I was in high school, osteoarthritis, which is very unusual, but um, somehow, lucky me, I got it. And uh, very hard to even climb the steps in the front. Um, I had a hard time. It took, took me a little while to get up the steps. I thought I would use this magnetic pulse around my knees for a little while and see if it, you know, did anything. Just. To <laughs> out of the blue. And within a couple of days, the noise, that it, I had literal noise in my knees from the, the arthritis, and that had totally stopped. And the pain is, I haven't had it since. Also, I had a very uh, bad case of arrhythmia. I would skip a beat, my heart would skip beats, and then it would speed up. And uh, I've had this for quite a while. And uh, I don't have that anymore either. Um, since use, I use the magnetic pulsar practically everywhere on my body. Chronic fatigue is, well, the, probably the best way. Someone once described to me how somebody described it to them, and it was basically um, someone hooking up a suction to you and sucking up your life force. I had to quit my job totally because I couldn't function. I did have some practitioners that basically um, gave me the feeling that it was all in my head. Um, and, and that's really hard to take. I remember when I got a hair analysis done from one company after I was into it a few years, and they came back and said that, you know, your, your levels are so low that, you know, you shouldn't be having any energy. And in fact, when they got my test, they redid it when they get such low report. And I just broke down and cried because that was the first confirmation of anybody saying, hey, something's wrong here. With the practitioners, I found that I really had a good rapport with, I felt like I was friends with. I started going on colon cleanses and liver cleanses and kidney cleanses and parasite cleanses and uh, juicing and fasting and totally changed my lifestyle. And once I did that, I was able to work three days a week. So I was able to function with chronic fatigue, but nothing still had kicked it out. Someone loaned us an audio tape lecture of Bob Beck speaking. 
and it was right away we knew we really wanted to look into this and and how life works through a newspaper we found out that he was going to be speaking two and a half hours from us in a couple months and my husband who knows electronics he built me some of the units so i went on the units i went on the blood electrification and the magnetic pulsar which is for the the limb system and when i went on it it just totally knocked me out i had to sleep you know for long periods of time during the day I ended up having to do three three-week sessions for myself, and then I, after that, um, I didn't consider myself as a person having chronic fatigue anymore, and I haven't, I haven't since. I went for a period of working, um, probably with the business. We work, you know, ten to twelve hours a day, almost seven days a week, and we our diet sort of fell by the wayside for about seven months. And, um, and I did notice my energy started going back down. So I got on the units right away. We changed our diet right away. And I really don't have chronic fatigue anymore. They found a very large uh, tumor, and it had to be excised. They did a hysterectomy. They uh, installed a cloth. They did a colostomy. They, um, they just about removed everything inside of me, but not everything, because the radiation, um, the radiologist reports say that uh, analyses show that there were still some metastasizing inside. I was discharged from the hospital and instructed to report for radiation um, uh, and for chemotherapy. I declined both. And I'll tell you about my interview with the chief surgeon. I've never seen anybody who belonged more naturally in the Spanish Inquisition. He described with relish, if you can imagine this, the terrible end that would befall me if I didn't go along and undergo the radiation and chemotherapy. And uh, I pointed out that I was exercising the patient's bill of rights, the patient's natural permission to decline or accept therapies that were uh, offered. I've never seen anybody so close to an apoplectic fit. He was, his face was the color of cerise and his blue eyes were flashing with rage. How come that I had, you know, the temerity to refuse radiation and chemotherapy, the things he believed in, and which I didn't. I just knew that that was not the way to go. Somehow it was just a conviction. And I uh, went into the Bob Beck Regiment full bore and came out of it smelling apparently like a rose. And I asked him a simple question. I said, look, okay, we'll leave, but uh, would you mind tracking the uh, uh, cancer marker, CA-125? It's for, uh, it's for uh, the cancer I have, the ovarian cancer. I will have nothing to do with anybody who uses alternative methods. And he stormed out of the place. So when I was relaying, relating to my uh, internist the, uh, this little event, you know, this episode, he said, well, heck, I'll, I'll take those uh, measurements for you, and I've been having those blood tests since then. Well, the first reading was 8 for the CA-125, which is the cancer marker for ovarian cancer. And I said, that's fine. The next one was uh, 10. And I said, but it doesn't tell me very much unless I can find out what it was in the hospital. We looked it up. It had been 102 in the hospital. I understand that 34 is the uh, cutoff point. Zero to 34 and you're um, free, or at least not in danger. Above 35, you are. And some people have very high readings. There is another uh, cancer reading called 19-9, uh, but they're not certain exactly how it should be used for diagnosis. And my, my readings on that, as you can tell from the uh, records that I've given you, have dropped gradually and are continuing to drop. A little boy that was 18 months old that had leukemia and uh, mother came in. Uh, he had been through rounds of chemotherapy and uh, every three months he would have a spinal tap and more chemotherapy and this little boy was a trooper and mom just got fed up with the whole process of the uh, regular medical care and chemo so she came to me and I said well let's put him on a really good program. We taught them how to change their diet and as a little boy we 